Welcome to Sound Bites. I am your guest host, Eric Barnes, here with the usual co-host, Holly Whitfield. And this week we're going to talk about Holly Whitfield's new book or new edition of an old book. I guess we'll call it that. 100 Things to Do in Memphis Before You Die. And we'll particularly talk about food and drink. But uh, thanks for being here, Holly. Thank you so much for having me. You kind of had to be. I, it's your I, show. I did have to be. <laughs> I'm now co-host and guest. I yeah. contain multitudes. Yeah. We could have done like the old Stephen Colbert, even Stephen, oh. he interdu- when, when he would interview himself. We could have done that, but probably a lot of work for Natalie. So I think we're, I'm glad Maybe we we'll did. try it in the future. Okay. We'll do that. Stay I, tuned. I, stay tuned. But uh, truly, so you've got this the new edition of 100 Things to Do in Memphis Before You Die. Yes. Uh, is coming out soon. Yes. The what if- give For the people who don't, I mean, it's a kind of self-explanatory title, but the book has had a number of editions and goes back and has had other writers. And so talk about that book. Yes. So 100 Things to Do in Memphis Before You Die was one of the first books in a series of 100 Things to Do Before You Die in Different Cities of the United States. It's published by a publisher called Reedy Press out of St. Louis. But I think it's interesting that Memphis was kind of one of the first ones that they tried out this idea. And this is a quick read guidebook. It's got 100 entries in it, 100 Things to Do. It's like fun to read, fast. You're just going through each item on your bucket list. Yes, the cover has a bucket on it. (laughs) I always think kick the bucket. I'm sure they meant bucket list. We're going with it, right? We know this, right. Is, this is how we read things now. Um, but the first edition was written by Samantha Crespo, who was a longtime Memphis writer, a friend of mine. I worked with her at Memphis Tourism. She did the first edition in 2014, and then she did a second edition and a third edition in 2018. And so it has not been updated oh, yeah. in like six years. And so, so much has changed in Memphis. Well, this is the post COVID edition. This is the post COVID edition, which we can talk more about later, too. But um, she and I talked a couple years ago, and she was like, I'm moving to California for my husband's job. I am not going to write the fourth edition. Go with my blessing. Take whatever you can pull from the third edition. It's all yours. And so I had already written one book with Reedy Press, which was Secret Memphis, that came out in 2020. Which was you. That was me. And that was all me. And that was the, that was like a new title. Like it was the first, first edition. Um, And so anyways, 100 Things to Do and Memphis Before You Die, post COVID, quote unquote, after a lot of shakeup in Memphis and especially the food scene. Yeah. Um, but that's partly why it has taken me several years to put this book together, <laughs> kind of waiting till we get to like a sweet spot where things have kind of settled down a little bit. Because in the book we cover, um, there's divided into food and drink, like recreation, sports, arts, shopping, lots of history, music and nightlife. So there's a couple different sections. That's kind of how it goes. I think it's officially released on April 1st, which is a funny day to release a book. I don't know exactly when it will be available in stores and on my website, but it's coming soon. But I, when people want to get it, they, they'll they be able to go to secretmemphis.com secret and buy it or any of your local bookstores or you get it on like Amazon and Barnes and Noble and stuff too. Okay. Okay. So we'll focus mostly on the food and drink, but we'll veer it around. I mean, sure. how did you I mean, certain things in the last edition had closed or maybe had changed. Or, yes, so, basically And everything. it's not necessarily like, let's mark everything that closed in the last six years because that's not very fun. No. But some things did close and then some things did open. And so how did you kind of make sense of... Like, I, part of it is, how do you make sense of that, the change? Right. And then also, what's the criteria? Is it the absolute best things or it's just this is a mix of things that gives you a real feel for Memphis and certain really good things that have to be left out? I think it's the latter okay. for me. The way that I always do these these kind of lists like this is I want to give people a real feel for the city. So that might mean talking about certain places that are just iconic, that are institutions, which is something Chris Harrington and I talked about on last week's episode of Sound Bites, what makes a, something an institution. So I'm talking about institutions, but I'm also talking about things that I think you should go and do, whether you are just visiting Memphis for like a day or if you've lived here for 150 years, you know, 
So I'm just trying to give people a solid picture. I'm not trying to necessarily say like the best because yeah. that's so subjective right. and it's so hard to do. So I'd rather kind of give people like, hey, what you need to do is you need to get barbecue in Memphis. Here are three places. Here's some more places. One thing I did do in this edition uh, with barbecue was I think in the third there was just one page that was kind of like, here's two places. And I said, well, here's three places. And then I said, here's a different item to check off on your list, which is to have like kind of a off the beaten path barbecue, like a barbecue pizza or barbecue nachos, like an application of barbecue that isn't just the classics. And that allows me to give the reader like, you know, six or seven options so they can read it. They can decide which, which like choose your own adventure they want to go on. (laughs) Well, we did a thing. You and I did a sound bites some months ago Mm -hmm. in the old office before it was flooded. Mm -hmm. And we were forced to sit on the 10th floor of the atrium in cross town (laughs) about like who, where we would take our friends. And I had just taken my friends who'd been here before, but hadn't seen a bunch of stuff. And it was like, yeah, I'm not going to take you to. Um, necessarily the best places, but I'm taking places I like yeah. and that are, you sort of do need to kind of experience. So we went to, um, like another time we'd gone to Payne's Barbecue. Is it the best? I don't know. It's really good. I think and it's, it's important crazy to go, to go, to go there. there. You're mm-hmm. like, I don't even know where we are. This is so strange. And then it's just really Memphis fun when you're at Payne's. Yeah. Right? Spoiler alert. I did include that, but I also included like Cozy Corner because, yeah. you know, the owner of Cozy Corner, uh, Desiree Robinson is the first black woman that's like, been inducted into the American Barbecue Hall of Fame. Yeah, so, yeah. and it's a kind of a different place. Yeah. Um, you know, it'll come in on like number five or six on the best of list, but I think that it shows a slice of Memphis that right. people want to see. If, if you read the whole book and you go and do, you know, a third of the things, then you would have a really good idea, I think, about a lot of our culture and history and right. yummy food here. What, what are other food that you included? That wasn't in there six years ago. That wasn't in there six years ago. Um, well, w- one thing, I did include Cameo, the bar, which I talk about all the time. But I think that they're a good representation of kind of this slightly newer wave of cocktail forward bars. Like oh, yeah. Inkwell is Inkwell's another one. Yeah. Um, and they're independent. You know, they're not attached to like an Andrew Michael um, empire. Which the Andrew Michael Empire is actually, they also got an entry in this book, and the, whereas they really weren't in some of the past editions. Right. Um, but yeah, so I, put, I have Cameo in there and because I just think it, it represents that, and they've sh- showed that they're going to have sticking power. Um, it's really tough when you're talking about beer in Memphis because we have a lot of great breweries. So you just kind of have to pick sometimes. And so I kind of framed our brewery scene with Wiseacre, yeah. This time and talked about, you know, their expansion, uh, tap room downtown. That's a really cool place for people to go if they're visiting. Right. right. So this is right. it's for visitors. They can pick it up. They can flip through it and plan. But like, if you're just a Memphian, you need like some staycation ideas. Yeah. Yeah. So those are some, let me think, what else did I include? That's new. Oh, I included, um, an entry about like rooftop bars and like places oh, yeah. to get a drink on, on the roof, which, we really those? didn't have. Um, I don't think of us having ago. a ton of rooftop bars. We don't, and we should, but we have some now, whereas we didn't have before. We, I mean, you had the Peabody, yeah, so that's great. But now we also have uh, Beck and Call, which is at the top of the Hyatt Centric. Oh yeah. We also have <laughs> Peacock, um, Tiger and Peacock. Tiger and Peacock. Thank you. I was like, I know it's two top animals. Of top of the Memphian in Midtown. Not to be confused with the news organization, the Memphian. Right, exactly. So if you can figure all of that out, you'll be rewarded with like a $16 cocktail that you can purchase yeah. on top of this roof. Um, and even like, okay, this is weird, but like the pyramid has a terrace. I took my friends have, there. We yeah. had a really great time. Yeah. It's weird. It's weird. It's, but it's, am, am I going to go back? I don't know. But it, I am really glad I went that one time. Exactly. So that's why I included that section. I think that's good. But there's like the classics are in there as well. Um, sometimes I approach it like, Hey, you need to have breakfast in Memphis. Here's some great breakfast places. And sometimes I approach it like you need to go to uncle Lou's. Yeah. Which moments after this 
<laughs> book was sent to the printer. They announced Very that they're funny announcement to Nellie moving McMahon. locations. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> like nice. moments after. Nice. I feel r- really, really good about like the currentness of all of this information. I was editing it up until like w- within the hour of it being printed, but. It, there's a couple that did not make it under the wire, so I will be... Well, you're talking about food, bars, nightlife. I mean, there's a certain transient... Yeah, you it's know, like restaurant all that. Tetris it, out yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think that's true. I think that's true everywhere, you know? I mean, some stuff... It's just how it goes. Sometimes it lasts a long time that shouldn't last a long time. <laughs> and sometimes there are things, you know, mm-hmm. um, that go too soon. So, you know, I, I think that... People and neither of those things that. really make it into a book like this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let me I'm remind everyone, I'm Eric Barnes, um, hosting, guest hosting uh, sound bites because we couldn't figure out how uh, Holly Whitfield, the actual host, co host with Chris Harrington, <laughs> could do this. Chris was not available, so I always love to come and do this, so this is great. Um, talking about uh, the fourth edition of 100 Things to Do in Memphis Before You Die. That, did you participate in the other ones or no? You just, you knew. Um, the woman who wrote them. Yes. Okay. I, I this one you wrote and did this edition. It comes out soon. Mm-hmm. People can Google it. Hundred things. Make sure they get the fourth edition. It'll be at the local bookstores. It'll yes. be on Amazon. It'll be on your website. Yeah. And, and so on. And we'll I'm, talk about some of the. the you're going to do some events and stuff coming up. We'll talk about those too. Yeah. Secretmemphis.com. I'm going to just keep that same website, like from my first book that came out in 2020, just to keep it easy. But I'll have I'll have both books on there. And if you get it from me, I like I'll sign it. I'll write a note to your mom people's moms really like these books i think it's just like <laughs> it's just the way it goes and that's the biggest compliment to me ever um when people tell me like my mom really loves secret memphis i'm like ah that just that's so sweet that so, is that's amazing yeah so there it goes um moms are people too, moms are people moms too. Are too says the one mom at the table <laughs> moms are people too Aww. i have a mom and i can tell you she's a person <laughs> so <laughs> it's it's great um, uh, let me t- let me do housekeeping in the middle because we're yeah. somewhere in the middle here. And uh, th- because I only guest host this, there's this awesome thing in front of me that I'm going to read that I haven't read in advance. Um, you're listening <laughs> to the Daily Memphian Sound Bites with me, the guest host, Eric Barnes. Uh, today we're talking with Holly Whitfield about this is awesome because there's all these fill in the blanks about her new book. And I want to like, I want to change my voice every time I get to the fill in the blank. Uh, if you're tuning in on WYXR, keep listening because we'll do the sidebar with. Eric Barnes, that's me, uh, after this with Holly Whitfield as the guest. Uh, and if you're listening to the podcast app, you can uh, uh, obviously listen here. You can also subscribe to um, get the sidebar. Um, you can also find other Daily Memphian podcasts, uh, the Tigers podcast, the Grizzlies podcast with Drew Hill and Chris Harrington. Um, we have the Behind the Headlines podcast, a lot of fake news and misinformation that's published every week uh, in Behind the Headlines by me. Um, <laughs> and periodically on the record, an occasional political podcast that Bill Drees and sometimes Sam Hardiman do. Um, but again, um, we're here with Holly Whitfield talking about the book. What Talk about some of the things, maybe, the events that are coming up. I guess this will all be on your website, but just yes. for people to know through the course of the year, there's some fun stuff coming up. Yeah, so it's funny because I've kind of soft-launched this book. I think I've talked about it with you in a, another podcast or somewhere, but I haven't, like, hard-launched it. Are you all familiar with soft launch and hard launch? Well, we are now. We are now? Okay. So the restaurants kind of do this. That's oh. fitting, right? But they're like open, but not really open. But if you know somebody or they're just like, oh, no, actually, we have a table. You exactly. can walk in and you can do this. Just don't judge us. We're just working out some kinks. Exactly. So yeah. I'm kind of in the soft launch, but by the time you're listening to this, I will have this all on my website and my social media. Um, and, you know, book launches are great. You go to the bookstore, you sign the books. That's really fun. I wanted to do a couple of different things uh, for this book launch because I did not get to do any launch release events for my first book because it was in May 2020. It was a high point of all our lives. Yes, a high point. I also had COVID in May 2020. Ooh. And yeah, so this will be different and I think more fun. And one of the ones that I'm going to do is... I've always thought Elmwood Cemetery was super fascinating. Um, people have called me weird for that. That's fine. You can call me weird for that. But it's a beautiful park. It's very historic. The people who caretake it are cool, and they get it. Like, they know, Amen. they understand, Absolutely. like, the, you know, the spooky side of it, but the respectful side of it. So not only are they in the book, but also I'm going to do a event that I'm co-hosting with an artist uh, in Memphis. And she <laughs> is a beautiful artist has uh 
made a Memphis themed tarot card deck that's rhythm and blues. And her artwork is really beautiful. I mean, each of the cards is like a stunning painting that tells a story. And I don't know if you're into any of those no, that's cool, tarot then. oracle things. I've kind of gotten into it just, if anything, for the art on all the different themes that you can have. So she's going to talk about that and the way that Memphis inspired her art in that way. And then I'm going to talk about this book and the way that Memphis is, you know, the inspiration for it. And then we're going to sell our books and our cards. And it's going to be great. And it's going to be at the historic chapel at Elmwood. And we're going to have some snacks, maybe some wine. And this is like on a Thursday night, one hour, quick and easy. It's April 18th. So I'm really looking forward to this. Um, I think it'll be fun. And thank you, Kim Bearden over at Elmwood for putting this together super fast. Because that's the other thing that happened with this book. I've been working on it for a very long time. And when I finished it, I was like, okay. And they were like, okay, it's going to be printed tomorrow. (laughs) Like it was so fast. Wow. Um, But I'm going with it. I'm going with the momentum. People are clamoring for the fourth edition, apparently, hopefully. Uh, Apparently and hopefully. And then you've got something coming at uh, Snowden Community Festival in April. That's kind of towards the end of April. Yeah. You do a signing at Burke's Mm -hmm. May 2nd. Mm -hmm. For Cooper Young Night Out. Yeah, That's right. and then in August, and people should start planning ahead their August calendars. Soul and Spirit, <laughs> Soul and Spirits Old School Book Fair at the Soul and Spirits Brewery in August. Yeah, so they had like you know the Scholastic Book Fair was the highlight of all of our childhoods, and last year Soul and Spirits decided to kind of bring that back, grown up style, and they had tons of local authors and booksellers, and it was incredibly popular. It was packed, basically all the authors and bookstores like sold out. Of That's their awesome. books. And so I just reached out to um, Blair over there at the brewery and was like, hey, are you doing this again? And like, can I be there? And she was like, hey, I have your first book and I really liked it. And oh, then my awesome. little heart warmed and I was like, yay. <laughs> this is the greatest People feeling. read words that I write. It's, <laughs> it's so nice. It's amazing. Um, but it's just a really cool event. So that's, even though it's not till August, that's why I wanted to shout it out. So I will plan to be there as well. Probably with a lot of other Memphis authors yeah. that you can meet. Yeah, that's good. Um, back food and drink, yes. other stuff in the book to give people a feel for things that are in there. Well, I don't know if I said, cause this is not just for people new to Memphis to be clear, to be clear. It's not just for people new to Memphis. I do think that people who are new to Memphis would especially find it helpful, yeah. but I think you'll probably get a few new things. Even if you've lived here for a while, I structured the food and drink section. Like we go through coffee. I talk about vice and virtue and arrive at some of our other like, mm-hmm. I approve. Yes, thank you very much. And then I go into breakfast, and then I go into barbecue. Ooh, what breakfast? Breakfast, I did... Who did I do for breakfast now? It's only been three days since I finished it. I should remember. (laughs) See, this is awesome. This is like me and Natalie trying to remember who was on the show last week, and we stare at each other blankly and go, I don't remember. Okay. Oh, by the way, it was Paul Young. Like, it could be like a really important guest. I mean, not that all of our guests okay. are important. Okay, as but. an author, do you do this, though? Like, do you write something and then you're, like, immediately out of my brain forever? There's a lot I of... Healthy. Yes, I think there's a lot of that. And then later, I will go back and be like, oh, this sounds pretty good. And I'm like, oh, I wrote it. Oh, thank goodness. It sounds pretty good. Yeah. Oh, no, there's a lot of that when I'm writing fiction. Um. Okay. I remember. I really focused on Brother Juniper's for this one, although I did talk about the liquor store and Sunrise, which was a really good thing, I think, for the timing of this book, since liquor store and Sunrise have both opened second locations. Oh, yeah. Like, during the process of writing this book. In fact, very recently. So I think they'll become even more part of, like... Sunrise's new location again? So, Blue Plate Cafe. Oh, out Not the downtown one, out east at Poplar 240. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. They, like, Blue Plates, family, like, they decided they didn't want to keep going with that. And so Sunrise yeah. went in there. And so it's great to have, like, another homey, cozy breakfast spot in the same place. So that's who I talk about yeah. uh, in the book. And I also the book has, like, tips and tricks on some of the items. How to like, get a free meal at Sunrise Cafe. <laughs> yeah, you know, you just, yeah. I'm not no, even going to go there. And tricks, <laughs> I'm not even going to go there. Just, <laughs> <laughs> My you get tip, your eggs. Also get bacon. Yes. But, I mean, what are the tips and tricks for breakfast? I mean, this this may seem kind of obvious, but sometimes I think people don't think about it. No, but I should have put that. See, this Natalie is suggested be, pancakes look, for the table. There's going to be supplemental materials on my social media. Ah. 
Follow because me. follow me. Um, <laughs> there will be. And I think that's going to be one of them. But I just said, hey, go to Brother Juniper's on a weekday. Oh, Mind blown. Skip the line. Mind blown. Skip the line, yeah. right? And some of them are more like obvious than others. But um, I do have a tip about like the World Championship Barbecue Cooking Contest. The Memphis and May one. Like, you got to get a special ticket if you want to taste barbecue. So that's like, that's a tip that probably Memphians know, but maybe not everybody else does. Um, so not every item has a tip, but some of them do. One of the tips is to follow our, uh, newsletter editor and early word author, Bianca Phillips on her oh. other blog, Vegan Crunk. If you want to know more about, uh, plant-based meals in Memphis, cause I do have a section on plant-based meals. I had to take Phobin out of it, which was very, very sad. After they closed. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that's the kind of an uh, is example. Is it plant-based um, s- places that are only plant-based or places that have really good plant-based options? Uh, the latter. So okay. I focused on City Silo because I think that they do a fantastic job of kind of appealing to a lot of people, but yeah. not not only just having like chicken nuggets, you know? They don't have like the fake <laughs> meat ones. Like, yeah. They have real food. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and then I also have plant-based heat, which is a great spot. Um, for like super good comfort food, cauliflower wings and all of that. And then I do mention Imagine Vegan Cafe in there as well. So. Yeah. I remember the when my son was living in LA and we went out and we went to some restaurant for breakfast, speaking of breakfast, it was like a brunch thing and it was great and it was really good. And somewhere towards the end of the meal, we realized it was all plant-based. Nice. And I thought that was really well done. Like, and I'm not, I'm not opposed to that I'm, but i'm not a plant-based person Surprise. yeah i know but we were like oh that's the way to do it you just go and the meal i mean we saw the the menu online it looked like a really good menu we went we ate we enjoyed and that was pretty cool love that um yeah. again talking to uh, holly whitfield about 100 things to do in memphis before you die the fourth edition is coming out any day now you can get it, it just follow holly on social media and you'll be able to find it um the other sections just although this is a food show some of the other stuff that's in there, again, like by history, is that like literally Elmwood and, you know, the Civil Rights Museum and yes. those kinds of... It's okay. a lot of that stuff, but I've kind of, especially with the Civil Rights stuff, I spent so much time learning about that when I was doing I Love Memphis Blog and working at Memphis Tourism. I really tried to give great information on how you can kind of I do like a self-guided MLK tour. Yeah. And like tell you about all the spots oh, cool. that you can go to and like, yeah, you can go in here or not. Yeah. You have to go into the Civil Rights Museum. And I actually yeah, yeah. added a couple of different sites that um, weren't in past editions. So dig into some of that. But it's also fun stuff. I mean, like the Withers Collection oh, yeah. on Beale Street. I don't know if people know that that is a Memphis thing. That's a cool um, way to go to Beale Street without, if you're not into the late night well, drunkenness. You know? Spoiler alert. That's actually how I approach Beale Street. I have an entry for kind of Beale during the day. Like, what are yeah. we going to do? Like, this is what your day could look like. And I point to the other entries, like Withers and A. Schwab. And then I have one at night. And it's like, this is what I would do. Yeah. This is when I would go. Um, so it's informal. But I do try to, like, I get some of those deep cuts in there, too. <laughs> what kind of stuff? Again, we'll stay outside food just for a second. Other stuff like music and nightlife. I guess that's probably, to some degree, you just said with Beale Street, but in other ways of experiencing Beale Street. But I also go as far as to talk about, like, some of our music festivals. Like, Mempho is in there. Like, I do have Beale Street Music Festival in there because we have faith that they're coming back. I mean, I've got stuff. But then I also have, like, Rail Garden. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's a different sort of place. And that is one that Samantha Crespo, the former writer, had included. But I was really able to fill out that entry and tell people what's up. I mean... In terms of bringing your kids or not bringing your kids yeah. and the times of that. So, again, a yeah, lot of practical yeah, information, good. but but fun. You yeah. have Paula Rayford's disco in there. I mean, you got to. You got to. You got to do it. Um, stuff that you had to take out. Food, food that you had to take out. Food we'll that I had to, to take out. Um, From the 2018 edition, which really would have been put together 2017. To 2017. Right. So, like, city tasting tours, I don't mm. know if that's going to come back or not, but yeah. Christina McCarter founded that. And in the pandemic, she kind of pivoted and opened Feast and Grays, um, which is, like, her cafe that's doing, like, meat and cheese and snacks and all of that. And she went full that direction. So she's not doing the tours anymore. She's right. got her cafe at the Brooks. So, like, in the on the entry about the Brooks, I kind of talk about that. Yeah. The cafe, I mention it, but I had to take out the whole entry. She's not doing the tours anymore. Yeah. Um, 
you know, there were some things in the clothes that I had to take out and some yeah. things that I felt like with new restaurants and new places to eat that, you know, some stuff got bumped. Yeah. You know, that yeah. had once been like, what I think essential. And we're trying to give people a picture of Memphis now, not a picture of Memphis like in some black and white freeze frame. You yeah. Know? No, no, I love that. Um, I, and I mean, you know, it sucks for whoever gets left out, but I do love that it should be evolving. When, when, as you did the whole thing, was there like, I guess we just focus on food. Were you frustrated there wasn't X thing? Did it sort of like highlight to you? I mean, if you'd done this 10 years ago, one would have been frustrated there wasn't really good coffee here. Because 10 years right. ago, there was coffee, but there wasn't really good coffee. And now we have lots of good coffee. Or there weren't, if you're a cocktail person, 10 years ago, there right. might have been a couple places with craft cocktail. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Now there are a bunch. Yes. Was there another thing where you were like, you travel, I mean, you think about mm. all this stuff. Were you like, dang it, I wish there was that. I don't really think I had like, dang it, I wish there was that yeah, when I good. was putting this together. But I... <laughs> You know, I wish there were. I wish there were more coffee shops. I wish there yeah. were more like bagel right. shops and plate like third places. People are talking a lot now about that. Right. Wish oh, there we are more. because we don't have an office. Yeah, we need <laughs> we, that. We need a second place. I don't know. What about a coffee shop open after eight o'clock? Speaking yeah. of writing books, I wrote most of Secret Memphis, the first book, at the Starbucks at Poplar and McLean because it was the only place that was that was open, open until like you know nine. Yeah. It's not open that late anymore, I don't think, after the pandemic. You know, but I like, was in Portland. Yeah. I mean, Portland is such a weird and strange. I mean, I love Portland, but it's in a really weird place. And a family out there, a lot of their coffee shops closed. You, it's kind of shot because, and there's a coffee shop every five feet there, it yeah. seems like. Seems like and they one really of shut them, them would yeah. be open. No. I mean, I'm, there are ones that are open, but it was really startling a couple times. Maybe that's getting better post COVID and post pandemic and post them sort of rebounding from all their troubles. Um, we got just a minute left. Um, yeah. We're going to talk to you more about some of the other parts of this um, yes. on Soundbites coming up next, or you can get it wherever you get your podcast. Um, and we'll talk about your um, your uh, your book, Secret Memphis, Weird, Wonderful, and Obscure, that came out in 2020. And we'll talk about whatever the heck else, heck else saved it. Um, <laughs> we don't have to an explicit warning on the podcast this week. Um, but any other stuff, anything else we missed? Um... Uh, no, I don't think okay. so. Again, people can get the book. It's a, it's it's officially uh, out April 1st. They can go to secretmemphis.com. They can follow you on social media. You've got a reading it um, and signing, I should say, at uh, May, for, May 2nd at Burks, but it'll be available at local bookstores and online. And that is all the time we have. Thanks for letting me guest host your show you co-host. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for letting me talk about my other job Absolutely. that I do besides the job that I do for you. So I there you go. I am personally <laughs> very opposed to people who have multiple jobs. I think that that's a really <laughs> terrible thing to do, and I would never do it myself. Ever. Um, <laughs> uh, but again, that's all the time we have this week. Um, we, uh, you can tune in on WYXR Radio 91.7 every Thursday at 11 to get sound bites. Normally, Holly and Chris Harrington hosting that. You can also listen wherever you get your podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, DailyMimpian.com, or WYXR. Thanks very much. Stay tuned for Sidebar.